Hi, I'm Will Knauer, a museum educator at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and this is Bridging the Gap, a series of digital art engagements. In this segment, we will be looking at Pink Bird Figure 2 by Helen Frankenthaler. It will be helpful to have paper and something to write with to respond to prompts in the video. Before we get started discussing this work of art, let's take a few moments to look closely at it. Start by letting your eyes wander around the work of art, taking notice of some of the details, such as the colors the artist is using and shapes that you recognize in the painting. Please pause the video to give yourself a few moments to look. Seeing this image on a computer screen, it might be hard to tell that this painting is taller and wider than the average person. But something easier to notice are the colors the artist used, those rosy pinks, pale blues, and greenish blues mixed among bright gold. Color was important to not only Frankenthaler, but a few other artists that were pioneering a movement in art called Color Field, where artists were beginning to paint in abstract ways using large, flat areas of paint. Frankenthaler once said of her own painting style, I mixed funny shades of colors and used them, but I used them because they made the drawing in my picture move. Take a moment to not only notice the colors in the painting, but the shapes and figures that you see. Pause the video as you allow yourself to look closer at these figures and see if you can imagine any of them moving in a certain way. Helen Frankenthaler was inspired by Jackson Pollock, and she herself was also considered part of the abstract expressionist movement. She, like Pollock, often worked with her canvases on the ground. But instead of using much of the expressive gestures that Pollock is known for, such as those quick dabs, dashes, and dribbles of paint that also characterized many other abstract expressionists, Frankenthaler focused more on the relationship between color and space. You can see some of that focus right here in this painting. Notice all of the blank space, or negative space, that she has intentionally created, leaving the raw canvas showing. These empty spaces themselves open up the possibility for us to see them as shapes and figures. Negative space is just as important in her works as the areas to which she has intentionally applied paint. The only rule, Helen Frankenthaler often said, is that there are no rules. This idea guided her throughout her work over a six decades long career in art. In fact, her goal with her art wasn't to please, but to push painting into new uncharted places. She achieved this with the color field artists, as well as when she pioneered a new technique called soak stain. This new method of painting involved pouring paint that had been thinned out directly onto raw, unfinished canvas on a studio floor, instead of using a paintbrush to apply the paint. The paint was allowed to soak into the canvas in a way that was only partially under her control. She sometimes called this process, well-ordered collisions. As an artist, Frankenthaler was always experimenting. She worked in printmaking, ceramics, sculpture, tapestry, and even set design, but she always remained focused on painting. She enjoyed, as she said, taking risks, being surprised, experimenting, wanting to push painting further. Always trying to create and innovate was something that drove Helen Frankenthaler. So it should be no surprise that she went about a creative and unique way in titling her works too. Some of her works are called Untitled, while others have names like Pink Bird Figure 2, Madam Butterfly, Tahiti, Into the West, and Mountains and Sea. She kept ongoing lists of possible titles, and after a work was completed, she would attach a title from this list to the work. For your activity, take a moment to look at this artwork for inspiration and see if you can come up with a list of your own titles for this piece. See how many you can come up with. Helen Frankenthaler was often inspired by the great masters of art, and would sometimes create her own version of their works. For the second part of the activity, use your pen and paper to create your own version of this artwork. Get as creative as you would like for your interpretation of it. And finally, you will pick a title from your list, and that will be your title for your innovative work. Thank you for watching. This has been Bridging the Gap from Crystal Bridges.